guide them and give them peace uh, as they walk down the halls, as they sit in these classrooms to take these exams and do this schoolwork. Lord, protect them from any bullying, uh, the ills of today's society. Lord, keep them safe, God, from gun violence uh, that is running rampant throughout schools. Lord, we just rebuke Satan and we just ask for your uh, healing hand uh, to cover them uh, before they enter into those schools. Lord, we ask that you bless the parents, give them the wisdom, or let them be engaged in their student's life and not sit off on the sidelines until something goes wrong. Allow them to be active participants uh, in the well-being and the, and the wholeness uh, as the, their children, uh, these children, our children, uh, gain their education uh, and continue to seek you uh, for direction in all that they do. We love you and we praise you. We thank you for this church, this church family. We thank you for the shepherd who you have placed over this house. Uh, God, continue to bless him and increase him and give him wisdom and knowledge as he continues to stand to declare what thus saith the Lord to be thy people. We thank you and we praise you for the word on tonight. And every heart will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's give uh, a round of applause to uh, this great pastor, Pastor Ben of Adam. Amen. To the ministers on the pulpit, uh, to this uh, awesome choir that sang our heart happy tonight. God bless you all. Amen. To the uh, officers of this great church. Amen. And uh, to my lovely bride, who is here with us on tonight. Uh, Told her she didn't have to come because she works in Lincoln, but she made her way. Amen. And for that I'm grateful. Amen. I was under the impression the service started at 6:30, and I didn't eat. Oh. I rushed from work, so she went to get me something to eat. So I'm good, y'all. I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> I'm not gonna fall over in the pulpit tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, to the first lady in her absence. Uh, I, I'm not reading from a particular text on tonight. I looked at the theme, uh, Christian youth staying together, staying focused in challenging times. Mm -hmm. I just want to uh, talk <coughs> through uh, the first three chapters of Daniel, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Amen. Staying together, staying focused mm -hmm. in challenging times. I think all of us agree that we are in some uh, challenging times. Amen. Amen. Uh, things that we've never seen before. Amen. Or things that we have seen that just got amped and magnified on the TV. Amen. We couldn't afford to have a TV back when it was going on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, usually when I prepare sermons, I like to have a quote or uh, some type of song, lyrics to a song to open up with. But uh, Reverend, as I was perusing through things about staying together, uh, everything was relational and sexual. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd come on in here and just say, we need to stay together. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes, Amen for a number of reasons, because there's power uh, in togetherness. Yeah, uh, and Jesus says, I believe in the New Testament, that where two or three are gathered together, or even with disciples, uh, they gather together in my name. Yeah. There I am in the midst of you. Uh, and there's a lot of division, uh, not just uh, in the White House, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, in our houses, uh, yeah. in the church house. Yeah. And if we don't come together, uh, that division will continue uh, to take place, it will grow. Yeah. Uh, and I learned that uh, you know if we uh, breed dysfunction, dysfunction becomes the norm for these young people. Yeah. And 
they may have offspring who become dysfunctional, uh, thinking that it's normal, but dysfunction ain't normal. Yes, amen. 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 But why y'all still around to teach these young people? Uh, let's get our houses together. Uh, so that we can have a better community, a better society, a better tomorrow. Amen. Uh, the book of Daniel um, tells us about um, some Hebrew boys. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We all know who they are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel, uh, Hananiah, mm -hmm. Rochelle, mm -hmm. Azariah. Uh -huh. uh, we know them by their names, fame. Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all heard that before, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the scripture tells us about them four young men. Uh, and there's something interesting in the text as we talk about staying together and staying focused. Uh, because as I begin to read this story, the text tells me uh, that God gave King Nebuchadnezzar permission to be sieged to take over the city of Jerusalem, the nation of Israel, because God just got fed up with her disobedience. Well, might I put that together tonight, Reverend, without losing my job? God has allowed someone to rule yes, because of our disobedience. Yes, Amen. Y'all yes, know where I'm at, don't you? Yes. yes. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Yes. See, I post my messages, so you know, I, I'm within guidelines. Yes. You know, but y'all get this story. Yes. God has raised up someone that he gave permission to. And I don't mean raise up in the sense that, you know, God fearing man and all that stuff. But God gave this ruler, this authority figure, permission mm -hmm. to do what's taking place in our country today. Mm -hmm. uh, and because we don't do what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about going out voting in November when it's presidential election. Mm -hmm. but I'm talking about going out to the polls when we're voting for mayors and governors yes, and superintendents yes. and representatives and you know all that's the election that matters yes, right, right, right. you know uh, not the president because it's the people on a local level the state level uh -huh. that control or have a say so what happens on a national level yes, yes. amen so as y'all continue to grow up um, and, and venture out you know some of you all that are moving out of high school shortly you know go get registered to vote and be active in your community and don't just sit silent to the things uh, that are happening in this world because Paul says to be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind you don't have to give in to what's happening in society just to fit in and be a part of the community and such as our text tonight uh, in Daniel chapter 1 God gives King Nebuchadnezzar uh, permission to take over Jerusalem he did not destroy Jerusalem, but God allowed him to come in and take it over. Yeah. And not only that, text says that he permits Nebuchadnezzar to take some of the sacred objects, such as our cross or communion table or whatever is sacred to us in the Baptist church, and put in the treasury of other false gods. But then during this captivity, because I think there were three of them at different times, uh, and I'm not going to get deep because it's a youth service, tired tonight, so we know we're going to stay on the surface tonight, but there were, I believe, three captivities, and in the first captivity, King Nebuchadnezzar specified that I wanted you to find me some young men from royal families of noble birth, and, and I want you to put them through a special type of training, some indoctrination um, to satisfy my needs. Uh, I, 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 am, I didn't enlist, I got commissioned into the United States Air Force, and I had to go through some training. Mm -hmm. I had to go through some indoctrination mm -hmm. so that I can speak and function on the level that Air Force functions and talks. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, and it's the same thing when you join up with any type of organization. You got to learn uh, those rules and those regulations for that organization so that you can fit in and be a part. Amen. You don't go to school without then having the first day and they go over the syllabus for what the rules of the classroom right. are. That's indoctrination. Amen. You don't join the church without going to a new members class right. without being indoctrinated to know what's going on in that church Amen. so you can fit in and function. Yes, well, that's what King Nebuchadnezzar wanted. He wanted these young men to come in and be indoctrinated with how he was running the show. Well, well. Now, this speaks to uh, our current situation in the because these young men in this captivity from the royal families and from noble birth, they were taken away from their families. Mm -hmm. We see it in the news today. Yeah, yeah. Children are being separated uh, from their families <coughs> because of a wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say it. There's no guarantee mm -hmm. that some of these children will be united with their families. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the question is not for me when they'll be reunited, mm -hmm. but how does these kids who are in these detaining centers can stay together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How can they stay together? Wow. How do foster children or people that are in the system stay together? Yeah, yeah. Tonight, we're exploring how to stay together how to stay focused mm -hmm. in challenging times. Yes, sir. Amen. Um, they were trained, text says, for three years, yeah. which is something similar to our educational system today. Mm -hmm. You gotta go through the 9th, 10th, and 11th, 12th grade. That's about four years. Mm -hmm. When you go to college, if you're smart enough, you can finish in three. Mm -hmm. If you go to yeah. grad school, the doctoral program is about three years, the master's yeah. program is about three years. Mm -hmm. So they had to go through three years worth of training. Mm -hmm. Not only that, of the young men that came into captivity uh, during this first captivity, four of them were identified from the same tribe. Mm -hmm. Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, Azariah, also known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Belteshazzar. Well, they were selected by King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. but their identity was changed. We also live in a society where they want to change your identity. Yeah. They don't want you to be who you are. Yeah. You are people of God. You are children of God. Yeah. And you don't have to be what the devil wants you to be yeah. because God made you better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to sell your soul or uh, succumb to what somebody wants you to be. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get in relationships and we sell our souls to the other individual who really don't love us trying to be all that they want us to be, losing who we are in God. But you got to stay who you are. You got to stay focused, even in the presence of captivity and challenging times. Amen. Do I have a witness? Amen. Amen. So then the king requests that they eat uh, food and drink from his table. Now, there wasn't nothing wrong with that because uh, that's what they did in the Babylonian culture. But these four individuals who were Jews, they could not partake of this diet uh -huh. because they were uh, committed to the Mosaic law. Uh -huh. that at the time in Leviticus, you could not eat what was unclean. Yeah. Yeah. So in staying true to themselves mm -hmm. and staying true to what their faith was, they said, we're not going to eat the portions from the king's table. But if you give us some water and some vegetables, we'll be just as good and better then what you want us to eat from the king's table? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, there was the chief of staff who was older over the security of these young men. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can be a part of something, but really not in it. Yeah. A part ain't in it. Yeah. Yeah. Because when Daniel said to let us try this diet, try this diet out on us, Tex says he was afraid yeah. that he would lose his life if he yielded to what this young man asked him to do. Well, you'll have a witness. Yeah, man. Sometimes you get caught up in situations that you really don't want to be in. Yeah. But to go along with the crowd yeah, and to keep your life, yeah. you give in to what you know is wrong. Yeah. Well, they took a chance on Daniel and the three. And two weeks later, well, the text says that they look more healthier yeah. 
than the ones that were on the king's diet. That's right. When you stay faithful to God, God will take care of you. That's right. He will sustain you when you stay true to what you believe. I think the text, the Bible says that a double-minded Christian is unstable in all his ways. Amen. So you got to be either hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, the text says he'll spew you out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Whose side are you on? Amen. I'm on the Lord's side. Amen. Yeah. So the text says that uh, Daniel made the decision. He purposed in his heart. Mm -hmm. that I would not defile my body with the portions that the king wants me to eat. Because even though I'm in captivity, it doesn't mean that I have to turn on my faith. Amen. The God I serve who uh, allowed you, King Nebuchadnezzar, to bring us into captivity yeah. is the same God that will keep me in the midst of this captivity. Well. Uh, yeah, and it shows in the story. So after seeking permission uh, and the diet was better, Two weeks later, they bring these men who were in training before the king. And King Nebuchadnezzar looks over all these young men. And four of the young men that are in this group stand out to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Not only because of how they look physically, but because of what they knew up here. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, in Georgia, I used to see people... Young kids rather go to school these days with no book bags and no paper and no pen. Mm -hmm. But that was unheard of when I was going to school. Amen. You had to go to school looking like you were going to learn something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in class, you got to take advantage of what the teacher is teaching you. And what the teacher doesn't teach you, you got to go home and study. Study for yourself. Because what you have up here can't nobody take from you. And what you have up here will make room for you. Amen. Amen. You'll have a witness. Yeah. 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 So yeah. because they were favorable in King Nebuchadnezzar's sight, mm -hmm. text says that he moved them forth into his royal space. Mm -hmm. Well, well. Because they were more capable mm -hmm. than the people he had serving them. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you think your enemies are doing a little bit better than you are. But if you just stay faithful to God, Amen. God will elevate you Amen. in due time. Amen. And what might look good to you now, you'll see that God was really working something better in your life, but you had to go through what you went through in order to get to what he wanted you to have. Amen. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Amen. Amen. In the second chapter of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. Mm -hmm. And he calls for all of his magicians and enchanters and sorcerers and astronomers come and he wants them to, I want, he wants them, y'all tell me what I dream. Well, well. Well, King, that's unheard of. What, what, what was the dream? You don't tell us. And we'll interpret it for you. King said, no. Mm -hmm. Y'all got the power. Mm -hmm. Tell me mm -hmm. what I dream. Mm -hmm. Well. And if you can't do it, well. you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Well. So they couldn't fulfill what the king requested because it was just unheard of. <laughs> no, it was impossible to do. Yeah. So the king had a decree out that all people that fell in the category of wise men had to die. Well, well. Word got sent to Daniel. Daniel said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's going on? Well, the king had a dream, and we're not able to reveal it to him, and he don't want to tell us what it was so we can interpret it. Daniel says, give me a little time to seek the Lord. Yeah. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah. you go pray. Uh -huh. And let's seek God together. Well, to see if we can make something yes, sir. of this dream. Yes. Well, they, Daniel got an answer and said, King, I got a revelation. Well, Come on in here and lay down and let me tell you what the Lord revealed. Right. Mm -hmm. So Daniel tells the king what the, the Lord revealed to him in the dream. And, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. So the king bows down to Daniel in worship. Now well, let me tell you something. The king didn't have no sense. <laughs> well, he was ignorant. Yeah. He didn't know no better. The king, because he's used to bowing down to things. Yeah. Because he's a pagan. He serves idols. He serves images. Right. He 
was, didn't have no relationship with the true and living God. Mm -hmm. But when God showed himself through the form of a man by yeah. the name of Daniel and three Hebrew boys, he had enough sense to acknowledge this God. Your God got power. Yeah. So although he bowed and worshiped to Daniel, he was really bowing in reference to a holy God. Amen. When you seek God for understanding, when you seek God to reveal those things that you don't understand, God will put you in a place to help make sense of things that other people can't make sense of. That's Amen. Right. And he'll use your gifts yeah. to elevate you yes, he will. in due time. Mm -hmm. The text says that after the king learned of these things from Daniel, and Daniel impressed him, that Daniel was promoted in the king's place. He appointed him to a high position, the text says, and was given valuable gifts. But watch this. Daniel wasn't one of them brothers that got hooked up by the man and forgot the folk that was in his neighborhood. I've been on social media yesterday and they got LeBron James all over social media for starting the school. Yeah. LeBron ain't one of them brothers that grew up and made it and forgot about the folk in his neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel said, King, I, I know you're hooking me up, but I got three other partners yeah. I need you to look out for. Yeah. So not only did the king hook Daniel up, right. he hooked up Shadrach, yeah. Meshach, and Abednego. Right. Yeah. We got to look out for one another. Amen. Yeah, we can't do this thing by ourselves. Amen. It doesn't do me no good to have something and I know you don't have nothing. Right. right. But watch this though, because the text is beautiful as we transition over into the third chapter because Daniel is not mentioned in the third chapter. Uh -huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the opportunity to see how God favored and blessed Daniel in the first and second chapter. Yeah, right. yeah. So now their test came in the third chapter the third, right. where yeah. Daniel was absent. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Can you use what somebody else gave you yeah. to help get you through the storm that you'll have to face yeah. in the days to come? That's yeah. Well, that's good. Well, well, well. Say it. For myself. Say it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't do no good, young folk, to grow up in a household and not listen to some of what your parents have to tell you. Uh, yeah. Because they know some of what they're talking about. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It doesn't do any good grown folk to come to church and not listen to what the pastor tell you. Because he knows something of what he's talking about. After all, he had to seek God for revelation. Okay. Before he got up and poured into you. Yeah. yeah. challenging time together. But then arose a situation because Daniel now, although he got him hooked up, Daniel was still up here. But he got them in here. So even though I'm in here, I'm up here, I may not see you as much. But don't forget who you are. Don't forget what brought you in here. Even though I was the vehicle that God used, yes, yes. it was still by God's grace. Yes. It was still by God's mercy right. that we are where we are. Mm -hmm. well, well, well. Yeah, so uh, the king had this dream in the second chapter of Daniel. And so instead of him humbling himself, he builds this golden image. Uh, uh, well, well, well. And he calls for all the officials, mm -hmm. everybody that had a position. Y'all come out here. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be at the dedication of this golden image. Mm -hmm. And there was something similar to this in the book of Genesis when they had the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. But now a few books later, 
Nebuchadnezzar got this golden image well, that's set up. I want y'all to come and, and bow down mm -hmm. to this image well, that I set up. Well, Some scholars suggest that this was an image of himself. So self-glorification because I'm the king. Well, the text says that uh, there was a herald that once everybody came to the space of the dedication that when you hear the sound of the instrument, you had to bow down in reference to the statue. Mm. Well, well. What sound are you bowing down to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, music has the ability to do one or two things. Mm -hmm. It has the ability to lift you up. Mm -hmm. Or it has the ability to bring you down. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going through something and you're in church listening to the melodies of the angelic angels. Well, well. It'll lift you up. Right. But if you're going through a bad breakup and you got the love songs playing, <laughs> your mind just start to reminisce back over how he or she used to do such and such for you and how y'all used to take strolls to the park or how he used to touch your hand or how she used to hook you up. Well, Music will depress you. Yeah. And maybe I ought to call them and see how they do. Yeah, music has a way of bringing you up or bringing you down. Music has a way of influencing you when what you're listening to is degrading of women, disrespectful to authorities. Mm -hmm. Music has a way of positioning your mind of making you crazy. You have to be careful, young people, older people, what you're listening to. Because what you put in here will become a part of this. Yeah. Yeah. And what's in here, yeah. so a man thinketh, so is he. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what you put in is what comes out. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, this was uh, forced worship. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a say so as to whether or not they could show up at the get it at the dedication. They were mandated to be there. And not only that, they had to bow mm -hmm. well, well. to the statue. Mm -hmm. You will have a witness. Yes, sir. And then text, they didn't have no First Amendment. Let me put that out there. Well, well. <laughs> they, they couldn't exercise no freedom of speech, no, no right of religion. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter that you was you, you were in my captivity and you're gonna bow to this golden image. Mm -hmm. But there was a mandate out that if you did not bow, you were going to be thrown into the fire of the furnace. Mm -hmm. Y'all know this. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's bowing down. And there were some people appointed to survey the crowd and make sure everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. We got new folk in church. They ain't been appointed. But they watching what everybody else is doing instead of taking part in the worship. Y'all yeah. got them in the classroom. You got folk that are tattletale on you versus being a part of what God is trying to take place. Amen. Three Jews are spotted. They're not bowing to what the king set up. And they go back and report to the king. And say, King, now you requested that everybody be brought here to bow down to the statue. And king, it said, whoever does not bow, they had to be thrown into the fire and furnace. Well, but there are three Jews, king. Who you appointed over the provinces of Babylon. Well, who are not bowing to the image you set up. Well, well. Text says the king jumped up in fury. Who in the world, why are they not bowing down to this image that I set up? Mm -hmm. I'm the king. Why are you not doing what I said do? Well, well. King didn't tweet. <laughs> 
about it, is it? But the king calls them into his faith. I hear y'all not bowing down to this image that I set up. So I'm giving y'all opportunity to bow down when you hear the sound. Thank you, Christ. When you hear the sound of your Now usually when you talk to a king, Usually when you talk to a king, you say, oh king, live forever. But in this instance, they say, oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Usually, king, if you was asking us something reasonable, we would have given it some thought. But what you're asking us, we can't do. Well, well, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no, 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 King, we can't do this. We understand that we're in captivity. We understand that you love our friend Daniel. Well. We understand that you appointed him in the highest position in the land. And that because of him, because of God's grace, we're in the positions that we're in. But King, we're well. not going to bow. Yeah. Well, well. Do I have a witness? Yes, yeah. sir. Amen. King, we're not going to bow. But then they say this, our God, our God. who laid, yeah. he's able to deliver us. Yeah. But then the text says, but if not, yes. well, he's still yeah. able. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you about that, that, that clause, if. Yeah. If doesn't refer to God. Yeah. If refers to the king. Yeah. Because there's no ifs about God. Yeah. King yeah. If you throw us in, yeah. well, well. God is able to deliver us. Right. Well. King, if you don't throw us in, mm -hmm. God is still able. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Y'all get it when you get home. Well, well. He's still able. Yes, He's still able. King, whatever you decide to do to us, whatever you don't decide to do to us, well. God is still able. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. King got upset because they start talking that God stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, well. I gave you two chances mm -hmm. to bow down mm -hmm. in reference to my image. Mm -hmm. I gave you two chances to give in to my society, mm -hmm. to do what I want you to do. Right. I gave you two chances mm -hmm. to sell your soul well. over to me. Well, well. But you don't want to give in. Mm -hmm. Throw them in. Well, well. Into the furnace. Mm -hmm. But not only that, turn it up. Yes. Seven times hot. Yeah. yeah, my brothers and sisters, we're going through life. And because we're taking the stance to do what God wants us to do, situations seem to be turned up yeah. a little bit hotter than what we're used to. Right. And sometimes we don't know how to deal when the heat is turned up. But oh, I tell you tonight, if you can just continue to stay faithful, That's right. God is able to do just what He said. Have a witness on tonight. Yeah. Yeah, he, he turned it up seven times probably. But not only that, the text says that when they turned up the heat, that those that were charged to throw them into the furnace, the Bible tells us that the flames burned them up. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. My brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter who's been put in charge to do ill against you. God still got the ability to protect you yes, right. and bring harm and death to those that try to do something against you. Yeah. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God got you covered. Yeah. God got you covered. So while those that put him in died, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are going through their test. And Daniel is nowhere in sight Amen. to speak on their behalf. Mm -hmm. But my brothers and sisters, just because there was one that got you to where you are, mm -hmm. well, when you can't find him, when you can't find her, mm -hmm. God always got a way yeah. of showing a fourth man in your situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the king says, wait, wait, wait. 
what I put in three. But I see four. And it looks like Son of God. Yeah. Say it. Said it looks like the Son of God. It's prophecy, y'all, of who is to come. So the king went and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come on out of that flame. I put three of y'all in, but I saw four. So then again, he's convinced. He's acknowledged the second time that their God exists. And he puts out a decree that if anybody talks against their God, they'll be punished. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to my seat now. But the three are back in the king's favor. Twice in the narrative, they're sentenced to death. Twice, they're miraculously delivered. And twice, they're promoted. I'm going to my seat. But when you stand on the word of God, when you stand on the promises of God, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Right, right. God is able to do above what you've imagined. I said God is able. Even when it seems like he's nowhere in sight. I tell you tonight that God is able. When you look back over your life and it seemed like the enemy was about to take you out. Yeah. When it looked like you, there was no hope in sight. God showed up in the midst of your fire. God showed up when you were strung out on drugs. God showed up when you gave in to that man. When you gave in to that woman. God showed up when you were with the authorities because your parents couldn't do nothing else with you. I want you to know tonight that God is still in the delivering uh -huh. Yeah. When it looks like you don't know what their future is going to be, God is still able. When it looks like a nut is running this country okay. in a hole, God is still able. What God has always done. When I look back over my life and everything God has brought me through,
bring you out today. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you. 